Hey guys, I built this Minecraft castle. I didn't use any mods or texture packs, just your basic Minecraft. It's a really easy build that anyone can do and I'll show you exactly how it's done. In my first two videos in this four part tutorial, I showed you how to build the gatehouse and the keep. If you haven't seen those videos yet, you really should watch those first. This video covers the building of the Great Hall, the central hub of the castle where all the activity takes place and it's usually the grandest building there. If you stick with me, I'll show you how to build it step by step. Hi again guys, so today we're going to look at the Great Hall. Hopefully you've seen my other two castle tutorials and know exactly what to expect by now. If you haven't, then you really should. If you don't plan to build the exact same setup as me, but you want to do your own thing, then I'd recommend that you lay out the base of your hall like this. The dimensions stated are in blocks, and I'll talk you through the setup nice and quickly now. Starting at the front, right side of the building, lay 11 blocks. Missing out the corner in our usual way, head off at 90 degrees, laying 21 blocks. Miss out the corner and lay 14 blocks. Same again, miss out the corner and lay 18 blocks. In a diagonal pattern, lay three blocks. This is the base of one of the two towers that make up this building. Heading back to the rear now, lay 33 blocks, making sure you leave a gap. Essentially, this is the corner of the tower. Miss the corner and lay 18 blocks. Back up and extend the rear line by adding 14 blocks, remembering the gap. Miss the corner out and lay 21 blocks. Miss the corner and lay 11 blocks. Now insert three diagonal blocks to complete the base of the second tower. The hall shares its side walls with the towers, so without missing a block this time, add a line of 12 blocks. Head into the other tower wall, lay 11 blocks this time, still not missing a block. And if you're doing your own thing, you're ready to crack on right now. If you want to build the exact same setup as me, it's slightly different. In the far left corner of the inner wall, behind the gatehouse, count out a space of 12 blocks. That's where we position the base of the left hand tower. Here I'm marking the position of the 13th block, leaving the corner empty as usual and making the start of the rear wall. Coming back to the first block I laid, lay 20 more. Miss the corner block and extend over 11 blocks. Moving back to the rear, add 13 blocks to make a total of 14. Miss out the corner and lay 18 blocks. You can now join the two front walls with three diagonal blocks. Heading to the back again, maintain the missing block and lay 33 blocks. Miss the corner and extend the rear line, but this time you can only lay 12 blocks, not 14. The tower shares some of its space with the keep on this side, and why not? That's how they might have built them. 18 blocks still head up the centre, remembering the initial missing block. This time we can't tie in the two front walls, so we'll lay four single diagonal blocks to match the pattern on the other side. From the front diagonal block, add 10 more to complete the front width. Missing the corner, you can lay five blocks this time, not 21 as before. Again, the hall shares its side walls with the towers, so without missing a block this time, add a line of 12 blocks one side and 11 blocks the other. It doesn't really matter which side to be honest. And now, whichever base layout you went with, we're ready to lay a single row of chiseled blocks over the whole thing. Now 
Now it's time to lay multiple rows of stone brick blocks over the whole structure. The two towers need 32 rows of blocks to reach their required height. The walls of the hall are shorter, just 25 blocks on top of the chiselled row. Fill in the top of both towers, making the floor one block deep. Now I'm lazy and I bridged the gap across the front hall because it was quicker to lay blocks that way. Whether you did the same as me or not, we now need a doorway space that's 10 blocks wide and 9 blocks high, measured from the ground. So for me, that means destroying a few blocks. In each top corner of the opening, add a block. Moving inside the hall, Add one block each side diagonally backwards and towards the centre. Add a chiselled block to the top of each. Stone brick blocks again. Add six blocks vertically upwards. One across, one up and another across. Do the same on the other side. Six up, one across, one up, another across. And now you can join the top all the way across. The pattern should echo the shape of the opening. Again on the inside, diagonally place blocks, but this time using chiselled stone. And instead of just one, we're going to lay seven vertical blocks. Then one across, one up, and one across. Sounds like a crossword puzzle, doesn't it? The same on the other side, and then bridge the gap. Again, going back to stone brick blocks, setting them diagonally again, add a vertical line of seven blocks on both sides. Again, bridge the gap. One last thing now, add a stair block into each top corner making a crude archway, and that's the door frame finished. Now we're going to build an artificial door because the standard Minecraft doors are just too small. I opted for the brown stained clay blocks. What stained them brown, I'm really not going to ask. Also select a stone button, as to me this looks a little bit like a door handle. From the inside of the doorway, build a wall of brown stained blocks, blocking the entrance completely. It should be four blocks wide and six blocks high. Head to the other side of the door now and add the two stone buttons. Personally, I like this effect and that's the door finished. Now we're ready to head to the roof of the hall. As with the keep, I'm going to use grey wall as I like the look of this. Starting on the left hand side, one block above the hall upper rim and starting on the wall of the tower itself, lay a row of horizontal blocks, finishing one block across the opposing tower. This creates a nice little roof detail. Here I'm going to lay the pattern on the internal walls, a nice easy diagonal pattern. Now we can extend the line of roof blocks right the way across. Heading to the other side of the building now, remember it's one block above the hall wall line. We can start on the tower wall again, but once our roof line has been extended a few blocks, delete this supporting block. This roof detail isn't required at the rear of the castle. Again, extend the diagonal pattern across the walls. Eventually you'll run out of wall space and you'll need to float a block. Just add a support block to the face of one of the others and build up. Continue as necessary and return when you're ready to delete the support blocks. If you do the same on the other side, you should reach the highest peak of the roof with just a single block. With all the rows fully extended across, 
the roof is nearly finished. I filled in the ends using the same grey wall blocks, but you might prefer to use bricks. Now we're going to add some architectural detail to the front of the hall. Underneath the roof line, add a row of stone brick stair blocks with a wider edge towards the bottom. This makes a nice recess. Add another row directly beneath this. Now add a row of chiselled blocks. And finally, another row of stair blocks. To me, that dresses things up a bit, as the Great Hall should really be the smartest building there. From one edge, three blocks down and four blocks across, remove a block. This is a window. Yes, it's small, but castle windows were small. Miss three spaces and remove another window, and so on, right the way across. Count down five blocks from the last stair block row and remove this row completely, replacing them with chiseled blocks. Your hall should now look like this. The Great Hall ramparts are probably the simplest we've done so far. Beginning at the top right cornerstone, on the front face of the left tower, lay two vertical blocks downwards. Miss a block and repeat. Add two blocks to the top of each rampart. Underneath, add two stair blocks. Simple as that. Do the same thing on the other sides, beginning at the first block and working across. You'll need to replicate this on the other tower, as I won't bother showing it here. At the rear, where the tower meets the roof, things are a little different. Miss the first jutting cornerstone, and on the second, add two vertical blocks. Miss a block, and this time on the roof, add four vertical blocks. Miss a block, add two vertical blocks. At the front once more, where the tower meets the whole roof, there's a lot of jutting corners. On the face of each, add two vertical blocks. From the nearest rampart, miss a space, Add two blocks on top of the new corner. Miss a block, add two more. Now on the floor, which is the flat roof of the tower, miss a block, add two verticals. Miss a block, add two verticals. Miss a block, and add two more. Coming back to the front ramparts and selecting the stair blocks again, join the gaps between the ramparts at the level of the upper stair block. Again, this creates a nice interesting detail. Don't bother with the second one down. That somehow spoils it. Continue with this, wrapping it around all the corners. Apply a stair block to every empty face. At the front, where we have all those corners, and where we added the two vertical blocks, Add two vertical stair blocks beneath each one. At 
at the rear again, when wrapping the stair blocks, we end up with a very small gap, but it's not visible and so I'm not going to worry about it. At the front, count down three blocks from the bottom stair block and three blocks in from the corner edge. Remove this block and two below it to create a window or arrow slot. Ignore the fact that I'm doing it wrong folks, we'll make mistakes. Leave a gap of two blocks, remove three blocks and so on across the front, giving you three windows. Same again at the side, three blocks down and three in, removing three verticals. This time leave a gap of three and repeat. Oops, I've done it wrong again. This time you should end up with five windows. The rear of the left tower is the same as the front. Heading inside this tower now, laying a floor, one block deep, level with the bottom of the windows. Select the torch from the inventory and add a few torches around the room. As I said before, I won't bother demonstrating the ramparts on the second tower as they are exactly the same. However, there is one slight difference that needs addressing. If you built your castle exactly the same as I have, then the right hand tower is constructed using the keep for support. This means that the rear of the tower is narrower than the other tower and that will affect the spacing of the windows at the rear to that shown on the screen right now. So with that sorted, it's just a couple more dressing issues to finish the wall off. Using polished andesite blocks, once again we're going to replace every second cornerstone in a staggered or diagonal pattern. Here, on a temporary basis, I'm marking the walls with blocks to match the existing pattern on the keep. With that done, these stones are then removed and the usual diagonal pattern is followed. Remember, match the pattern horizontally on a flat face and drop a row when turning a corner onto another face. Do this correctly and no two andesite blocks should ever be side by side. As with the other structures, replace the top rampart block with andesite. On the front face of the towers only, replace the block directly above the windows with a chiselled block. Beneath these same windows, replace the whole row with chiselled blocks. Around the doorway, staying one block away from the edge, copy the shape of the opening and replace the blocks with chiselled stone. Now we're going to add a banner just to the front faces of each tower structure. Again I'm going with red and yellow banners, but feel free to go with the colour of your choice. Starting four blocks down below the centre window, lay in a pattern of your choice.
and that pretty much finishes the Great Hall. The next video will show you how to finish the curtain walls and it's amazing how that really pulls the castle together. I'll also cover the drawbridge and a few more finishing touches that will hopefully bring your castle to life, so do watch that video. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please do like it if you did. If you didn't, why not let me know why so I can improve my future videos. Please subscribe to my channel, post me your comments and send in any requests for Minecraft tutorials. I've got plans for dozens more in my head, but I'll always try and help out my subscribers. So look out for part 4 of this castle tutorial. Thanks for watching and remember, don't pull the lever.